Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Gentleman Pursuits podcast, where you sit there with your headphone and listen to me talk about watches for 10 minutes straight. And yes, how is everyone doing? A while ago, I started getting into um, vintage watches. Uh, I wasn't really a huge fan back then because I didn't quite see the appeal of a pre-owned, older-looking watch. You know, watches that were built with older technology and material just didn't just didn't give me the green light to go for it. However, one time I was scrolling through Instagram, I saw this gorgeous, gorgeous vintage Rolex Oyster Chronograph. It was so breathtaking that I that I misclicked and refreshed the page and the post was gone. I then spent the next 30 minutes right looking for this for looking for set watch and when I saw the price of it, I went to the bathroom and cried for another 30 minutes. But the point is that watch kind of convinced me to look into different vintage watches from various brands such as Seiko and Longines and Tiso. And I got to say, they are they are really impressive. I found a few watches that I liked at an amazing price and consulted a few of my friends who are outstandingly more experienced on vintage watches than me. All I got was, you know, I was sending pictures to them and all I got was, oh, all these photos you sent me looks off. They, they just don't seem like a Seiko, right? Then I t- took a c- closer look to a picture and weirdly the logo does seem off like you know it's really well polished while the dial is really you know old and yellow i tried to find a few more seiko vintage watches they all look a bit suspicious to me they all started to look a little bit you know not quite normal to me either the logo's off or the bezel or the pictures were taken with the toaster all these stuff were hindering me from actually purchasing my first vintage watch so today i want to talk about things you should know or to be aware of before buying a vintage watch first and foremost um do a ton of research on the watch you like research about the watch like you're about to give a speech about it in front of a thousand people i usually do my research about on, on watches, uh, on watch you seek forums, military watch forum, time zone, or or if if it's like a if there's like a brand specific, you know, forum such as Rolex Rolexforum.com, I'll go there sometimes for for information about certain movement. I'll go to Ramft R A N F F T. Buying a vintage watch is very different from buying one. From a boutique, let's say, let's say you're just you you just decided you or you're deciding to buy between you know buying between a, a Submariner and a Daytona or a Day Date, right? Watches that are still in production between buying a Submariner, no, watches that are still in production have less of a risk when it comes to the legitimacy of a watch. However, you know, for more more of the rarer pieces that can sometimes be hard to validate or fact, fact check because there aren't a lot of references out there online to refer to. Now, that is something you want to know thoroughly. So do extensive research on the few potential vintage watches that you are planning to buy or make sure you, f- you make sure you find a trusted buyer. But once again, spotting a fake from photos can be really hard and it all ultimately comes down to experience. So do your research, please, and ask around your watch loving friends or just post, you know, the pictures in from eBay onto onto watch you seek and ask around and get other people's opinion and hope for the best. The second reason, uh, not second reason, the second thing to look out for is the performance of the watch as you know it's really important it's it's more you know it's like the only important thing maybe it's just me but uh i'm a really i'm a really clumsy person the moment the moment i get shipments of anything i ordered online i get way too excited and forgot to check the quality of the item i've received and sometimes maybe the zipper would be broken or or the buckle of the belt I ordered is loose 
Yeah, so I always notice them after ripping the tag off. So this may not be a problem, but please, after receiving a watch you've ordered online, make sure that everything's working and functioning accordingly. If it is an uh, automatic watch, make sure you wear it and move it around and make sure it's winding correctly. Wait for at least 24 hours as like, you know, give it some time to test the watch out if it's winding correctly. If it has a like a flyback chronograph function, make sure you test that out and see if it's malfunctioning or not. And of course, if you bought something on eBay or Chrono24, and it clearly stated that the watch is not in working condition, then it wouldn't be their problem. But still, if they didn't say anything, if they didn't specify that the watch is not working, make sure you uh, check it properly. So the third thing to look out for is the condition of the watch. This is similar to point number two, and that's the condition of the watch, but Make sure you ask enough questions to the buyer and make sure you know what condition the watch is in before paying a grand for it, before paying two grand, three grand, I don't know. As mentioned before, it, is it functioning? When is the last time the watch was serviced? This is actually a really important question to ask because yeah, you could be buying a completely functioning watch, but it may be rusting from within. So make sure you know the actual condition in every detail about the watch you're about to buy, especially vintage watches that have been discontinued for a while because if the parts in the watch started to rust, it can be hard for you to find the right parts for it. Fourth thing to look out for is, um, this is not really something to look out for, but more, more of, um, you know, identifying the reason or the motive behind buying or doing, making this purchase. If you're looking for investment, it is best to buy vintage pieces that is wanted by a lot of people. You know, let's take the watch I mentioned at the start of the podcast as an example, the Rolex Oyster Chronograph. The watch itself looks like a, the watch itself, it's a beast, right? But at the same time, it is a wanted piece by a lot of people. A lot of watch fan wanna own that piece. Now that would be a nice vintage piece to invest in. Of course, the price is going to be sky high since it's a Rolex and it's in high demand. And every watch, you know, a vintage watch lover would love to add that into their collection. Second reason behind buying, purchasing vintage watches is that uh, you yourself is fond of it. It doesn't really have to be something big, you know, big branded, right? A Tiso two tone would be nice, a Doxa guild dial chronograph is also something i've been trying to get my hands on so something from smaller brands they have really 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 good looking vintage watches as well but the point is it doesn't have to be for investment all the time that definitely you know investing is definitely someone's you know pe some people's approach to watches but you have to identify correctly um your reason the motive behind it and last but not least, the fifth thing to look out for is something called Franken watches. So you know Frankenstein, yeah? So the doctor put all these different parts of dead body together to make a monster. So same goes to Franken watches. It really isn't a thing that you can tell right away, but try looking for weird looking logos or things that don't really go along with each other. Just like I said before, the Seiko watch that I saw uh, on eBay, the, the Seiko, the O of the Seiko looks off and you know, it looks really polished while the dial looks really old. So if you yourself couldn't detect it with your own eyes after, let's say you take the gamble and you purchase it anyway, after receiving the watch, maybe take it to a watch professional and have it checked to see if the parts, um, you know, matches the movement of the watch or the reference of the watch and see if you're getting what you're supposed to get. If not, call the cops and have the seller arrested. 
No, I'm just joking. But definitely, definitely return it to the buyer. And, I mean, return it to the seller. I'm sorry, return it to the seller and start compiling a list of who are trustable sellers and who are scammers or sell Franken watches. And that way you will have a much clearer idea on where to acquire your desired vintage watch next time. As I said before, it's all, it ultimately is down to experience. So it's really good to have come to start writing a list for it. So uh, there you have it. Five things to look out for before buying vintage watches in my opinion because really you, you you need you need practices you know to look out for you know the good and the bad there's no fast way to learn how to you know avoid avoid the the scammers or there's this one glorious sellers that only that sells only real watches right even horology house made a mistake a few few weeks ago where they sold a counterfeit so it really is all it really all comes down to personal experience so practice make perfect do more research keep browsing keep browsing forums ask around talk more about it and you'll get it Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the latest episode of the podcast. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button in front of you. I'm not sure if you're listening this on Spotify or Anchor, but either way, make sure you're following me on uh, every social media platform on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Anchor, Spotify, everything. Just make sure you're following me. You'll get the latest news on articles, uploads, podcasts, new podcasts, new news, all kind of posts on watches and whiskeys. If you're not, you're missing out. So, yeah, make sure you're following us. And until next Sunday, have a great week, guys. Stay safe. I'll see you guys.